I was on my way to meet God and was able to see and hear the flow of prayers briefly. The prayers were grand. Someone close to me was pleading on my behalf before the face of God. I am a young mother of three who had 20 minutes of near-death and out-of-body experience in 2019 at age 34. After giving birth to a beautiful baby girl, I had a tubal ligation which led to complications, hospitalization for over 52 days. My perforated bowel caused me to face many mental and physical challenges. The value of telling my unique story is a therapeutic way for me to connect, motivate, and become a resource of hope to others who may be going through something similar. My story is not for me to keep. It's purposely destined to be shared with the world. At age 16, 32, and 33, I've been resilient in bringing a new life into the world without delivery complications. My health never declined, and like always, I would bounce back to being active like jumping out of airplanes, climbing mountains, traveling, and just living my best life with princesses. I had plans on returning to my dream job at the Arkansas Heart Hospital and continuing my studies earning my Bachelor of Science in Health Information Technology at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. However, this last time around, after giving birth, changed my life forever. My newborn was sent home to her next of kin for up to six months. My 16 years old at the time was left with caring for her younger one-year-old sibling, and my family was at my bedside every day as I was fighting for every breath of life. Imagine with me the game Hopscotch. It's a traditional game designed to be fun, and it brings back good memories of jumping on squares of numbers after the next. Well, with a snap of a finger, Hopscotch is now your reality. Hopscotch was a game changer for my life. Each square represented a single problem, double problems, another double problem. By now, you can imagine this concept. Along the way, I was mentally and physically exhausted. However, I heard the pleading in my mother's prayers, the cry in my father's heart, and saw the sadness in my sister's eyes for me to survive. I wasn't a person that would give up easily anyway. So I endured test after test, surgery after surgery. My faith was tested like never before, but I kept going, and now I can see God's promises for my life in my future. My surgical scars are not the prettiest. In fact, they are pretty ugly. However, they remind me every second just how close I came to being gone forever, and for that, I am grateful. My scars have shown me a new path that I am able to share with the world, I am grateful to God who sent me a team of angels. On July 22, 2019, two days after surgery, Connecticut scan showed significant atelectasis, complete or partial collapsed lung. On July 23, 2019, the abdominal X-ray showed a large amount of fecal material in my right colon as well as colonic ileus, intestinal obstruction, along with intraperitoneal free air, indicating perforation. An NG tube was placed in my nostrils for feeding, and for gastric decomposition, NG tube procedure was extremely painful, very uncomfortable, and I declined the placement of another NG tube down the line. I made it to July 26, 2019, exactly six days after surgery with signs of life-threatening illnesses and infections. I kept complaining that I was hot. My family was getting worried because the room temp was extremely cold. I laid directly beside the air vent and still not cooling off. Deep inside, I was burning up. A match was lit inside of me, and the heat was spreading like a wildfire, suffocating my bones and my organs. Everyone was puzzled, except my sister. With her medical knowledge, she recommended that the doctors look into signs of an infection. Honestly, I wasn't going to make it to see Dawn. I was on the verge of death. My mama was my advocate, my signs and symptoms were going to be followed up in the morning, but my mom was persistent, firm, and strong with getting me help that night. The doctors ran a CT abdomen and pelvis with contrast, which showed increased fluid and air concerning perforation. General surgery was consulted, and I went into emergency exploratory surgery right away. During the exploratory surgery, once my abdomen was opened, the surgeon noticed a return of free air and a large amount of succus, juice, a little over 3.5 liters. She noticed that my bowels were pretty poor in shape with a fair amount of exudate, fluid. Further exploring my abdomen, she discovered a zero. 
five centimeters bowel injury that happened during the tubal ligation on July 20th, 2019. She also found several interloop abscesses. The surgeon was able to remove the abscesses and rinse out my intestine, thoroughly checking for additional punctures. A wound vac was placed in the incision due to high risks of infection and two drains were inserted. The left drain was placed in my pelvic behind my enlarged uterus and the right drain was placed within my small bowel. I was sent to PACU for treatment. Cultures revealed I had three life-threatening infections, Klebsiella oxytoca, Streptococcus anginosus, and Enterococcus hyri. Unfortunately, these infections were left untreated for days and had entered my bloodstream and began to attack my organs. I became septic. The smell and tastes from my bowel coming out my mouth were toxic. On my 34th birthday, August 16th, 2019, still in ICU, I was diagnosed with acute hypoxic respiratory failure, acute renal failure, and congestive heart failure with an EF of 10 to 15% blood pumping to my heart. I also developed anemia and had a scary episode of epistaxis, nosebleeds. According to the nurse, I bled quite a bit and received two blood transfusions on August 29, 2019 and September 3, 2019. My health continued to decline. Chest x-rays showed bilateral pulmonary infiltrates versus edema, basically pneumonia, in both of my lungs. Gosh, I just knew the pneumonia was going to take me out. I was on several antibiotics and remained on BiPAP for increased oxygen. I found the strength to walk little by little with assistance, and I was constantly being repositioned by nurses on the hour to reverse the pneumonia as well as to take the pressure off my bed sores and back pain. Three days later, the pneumonia in both my lungs subsided. One doctor reported that I seemed over-medicated. He was probably right. I was given anything to ease my pain and suffering such as morphine, oxycodone, Percocet, just to name a few. These medications were a lifesaver, especially when it was time to change out the wound vac on my abdomen and dressing. I will never forget how my flesh smelt and the sight of being able to see deeply into my abdomen. The moment that changed my life forever. On August 28, 2019, the day before discharge was a typical day. A nice visit from my sister, she stopped by to see me on her way home from work. My sister is a hospice aide future LPN, and my mother is a hard-working housekeeper, so I had the best services of both worlds with lots of love and support. My sister and I laughed, watched TV, sang praise and worship songs. I was overjoyed with excitement of going home tomorrow. She left me with, see you later, I love you, sis. I'll pick you up in the morning. I started to miss her company right away, and I was back to being restless and staring at the clock. Ironically, it seems the more I stared at the clock, the quicker time went by. Then, with utter surprise, a team of doctors and nurses rushed into my room like it was a state of an emergency. They were prompted stat by the heart monitoring team to get to me fast. When they entered my room, I was conscious, and the doctor asked me how I was feeling. Before I could respond, my heart stopped, and I went into a VT cardiac arrest. My spirit instantaneously left my body, and I could feel myself leaving the weight of my physical body. Briefly, I was able to hear the cry for help, code blue, and was able to see the operations that were going on to save my life. I had no sense of pain, so I didn't feel the CPR that broke my ribs or the five electrical shocks to my heart. It was like I was in a deep, peaceful sleep, almost like Sleeping Beauty. An awareness came to my mind. My body is there in reference to the hospital bed, but I am here in the knowledge that I was in a far separate place than my physical body. An awareness came to my mind, and with complete shock and fear, I said to myself, oh no, I just died. I didn't mean to die. Swiftly, a calmness came over me like a soft and gentle, comfy blanket. I felt reassured that I was going to be okay. I felt like I just gained some superpowers, I was immortal, floating towards a warm, inviting being of light in a dark tunnel. I felt pure and light as a feather floating up effortlessly towards the light. I couldn't take my eyes off the light. I was deeply engaged. The dark tunnel turned into rays of vibrant light, a blend of futuristic colors, and the space around me and beyond me was endless. Then, I heard the most beautifully composed instruments of music and peaceful sounds, 
I was mesmerized. The closer I was being called by the light, the deeper my rest felt. I felt special, connected, welcomed, home, loved, and equaled. I felt smiled upon and forgiveness. I wasn't worried, stressed, hungry, thirsty, or in pain. There was no notion of time. I was on my way to meet God and I was comfortable. I was able to see and hear the flow of prayers briefly. It's like the prayers were an object and I was passing them by. It's also like receiving gifts and saying, all of this for me with a big smile. So I know for sure God hears prayers. I am not sure if I was aware of who was praying. I just knew that each individual prayer belonged to me. The prayers were grand. I feel the more the merrier when it comes to someone praying for you. Someone close to me was pleading on my behalf before the face of God. I feel that it was the spirit of my grandfather who I adored and missed so much. Lastly, I eased into a garden, and it was one particular flower that intrigued me. It was like a burgundy to reddish lily flower that stood out among all the other flowers in the valley. The stem of the flower was translucent, and you could see the flow of life and energy. This was my glimpse into paradise. This experience was higher than my mind could phantom, so what happened after this is a blur. I am not sure if I had a choice to stay or return. I believe the stubborn part of me wanted to stay, but the other side of me wanted to return to my babies and my family. I was unable to turn around on my own. It felt like time travel backwards when I was transported back into my physical body, if that makes sense. Almost liked being sucked through a portal. Now sometimes I feel a stranger to this body and my spirit is disconnected from my physical body. I believe the day of the cardiac arrest, the old Shawnees died. During all of this craziness while being revived, according to my sister, she got the stress call to return to the hospital. She was just approaching home. She didn't know what to expect, but whatever was going on, it sounded bad. So she hurried back to the hospital. My sister rushed into my room and asked the doctor what was going on. They assumed, based on my sister's uniform, she was an employee coming to assist in the code blue. The doctor yelled, What do you mean what's going on? She coded. According to my sister, she then noticed my lifeless eyes popped out of my eye socket. She also noticed the equipment and everyone surrounding my lifeless body, so within shock, she fainted. The doctor realized that was my sister, helped her on her feet, and rushed her out of the room while they were working tirelessly for 20 mins to revive me. My parents were notified, and everyone remained in a private room close by until I was stabilized. I wasn't aware that I was in an induced coma to take the pressure off my brain and heart. I was intubated for five days and was able to be weaned off the ventilator. My improvement was very slow, but miraculously, I wasn't a vegetable. At the time, they were unsure how much damage was done to my brain since I was without oxygen for a while. I don't remember waking up, but I was told that I was in disbelief that I had died and that my heart stopped beating. Unfortunately, certain time frames are still vague. I was told that I was given medication to wipe out the memory of the trauma. God allowed me to keep certain memories of the near-death experience, to cherish them in my heart and share them with the world. On September 11, 2019, I was finally discharged to go home safely with EF 25 to 30% blood pumping to my heart. I was on over 20 pills daily, I wore a life vest, had an IV milrinone in my arm for cardiac support, a pick line still inserted in my chest as well as the wound vac still in place. I was readmitted at a different hospital with concerns of CVA, stroke, from September 14th, 17. 2019 for acutely worsening aphasia, stuttering, basically stroke-like symptoms. The MRI showed volume loss in the brain. I also had a swallowing test, and at the time, I was only able to eat only puree foods. After I was discharged from there, I tested positive for E. coli. December 4th, 2019, I had to go in for SICD placement, also known as a defibrillator. In 2019, I saw the operation room more than six times. Tubal ligation, exploratory laparotomy to repair small bowel injury, drainage of intra-abdominal abscess and drainage placement X2, wound vac placement to incision. Abscessogram X4, EGD, pick line placement had undergone multiple drain placements in my pelvis and ICD. It wasn't until a year later that I had remembrance of my out-of-body experience and near-death experience. 
I didn't even know that the term near-death experience even existed. Fast forward until now, I was diagnosed with PTSD, which triggered those reoccurrence memories and feelings. I am terrified of hospitals, needles, and operating rooms. I overcame stroke-like symptoms due to subsequent brain injury, drooling of the mouth, tremors of upper and lower extremities while conscious. Overcame slurred speech, difficulty swallowing and walking. My bowels began to respond to treatment and slowly began to function normally. But I suffered loss of memory. I had loss of independence. I felt depressed, loss of pleasure, felt powerlessness, anxiety, fear of going to sleep, hair loss due to meds. I have my up days and I have my down days. With all of this going on, I graduated from cardiac rehab 2020 from the heart hospital where I previously worked and changed my daily diet. This gave me a sense of accomplishment. My recovery is followed by a heart transplant specialist. Life is just a series of moments and the spirit is just passing through. Our spirit doesn't belong here, it belongs with God. I get that more now than before. So now I stopped holding on to temporary things. Everything has its season. Most days I feel inspired by my near-death and out-of-body experience. It's very hard to adjust once you get to know or meet your inner spirit outside your physical body. It's been two years, and I am still trying to process it. CHF doesn't define me even though I take a lot of daily pills. I want to spend each moment with my children and inspire others. Love is the key to eternity. That does it for today's video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment below.